Hi, good morning guys, thanks for joining me. Mark here again. Just a real quick video on what I thought to do today, just uh, taking advantage of the sun being out, and just talk a little about solar navigation. Now there's a couple of ways in which you can do it. The first way which we're going to talk about is just how to do it, find north and south just by using just the fingers on an analog watch. And the other way is just by using sticks and stones. So when it comes to solar navigation, this is my preferred method out of the two. It's fast, it's simple, it's easy, and you're not relying on a full sun to be able to get a bearing. So whether it's a little bit foggy, the sun may be diffused by the clouds slightly, or you may just be down in the woods and you can just about see a little bit of the sun poking through the trees, then this method works well in them situations too. So what we've got to do in the northern hemisphere is we're just looking at the hour hand and also the top of the watch here. And it's just a case of actually pointing the hour hand directly at the sun and dividing between the hour hand and the top of the watch. And that's going to give us a south-north bearing. So if I just turn the watch around and just point that, uh, that hour hand directly at the sun there and actually divide, like I was saying, between that hour hand and the 12, and that's going to show us over in that direction there, that is south. So we can conclude from that northeast and west. So if I just get a compass and just verify that what we're looking at here is south, and as you can see that there, that's pretty much bang on. So again, if you've lost your navigation kit, you may have got turned around, you may just be building shelters and you just want to make sure that you can maximise on the daylight hours or making sure they haven't got any kind of prevailing weather blowing into your camp, that this method works well for all sorts of situations. So if it is it used digital instead of analog, that this method works just as well and just as easy. It just takes a little bit of conversion, a little bit of imagination. And the majority of us carry mobiles with us the majority of the time. And again with these, the beauty of them is you can actually convert the clock over from digital to analog. And again, it's just a case of just doing that and then pointing the hour hand directly at the sun and then bisecting between that hour hand and the top of the clock here. And that's going to give you that south-north bearing. Or just as long as you know what the time is, you can actually draw just the clock face just in the dirt or in the snow and position a stick at the hour hand and then just convert that and just do the bearing and just convert it that way. Now very, very simple again, you can just draw just a clock face just in the bottom of a pad and the more accurate that these numbers are and the spacings are, that the more true that reading is going to be. But if I just strip off just a little bit of bracken here, just to give myself just a straightish stick. And what we can actually do is again just pretending that this here is an analog watch and we knew what the time was and the time is 25 past 2 so we kind of know that that hour hand is going to be pretty much in between the 2 and the 3 and again we can just point that directly at the sun like we did do with the watch and just bisect that line between the hour hand and the 12 and that's going to take us back up to the position over there and we knew when we checked with the compass that facing over there is south. And if I just verify again, that that there again is south. So, you know, it's not going to be 100% accurate. It's not going to probably be as accurate as what it would be using a watch. Like I say, it's just making sure that those numbers are spaced. But this thing, you know, it isn't about accurate degree readings or bearings. It's about finding north, east, south or west. So for the next method, it's going to be the shadow stick method. Now this method has been around for centuries. And what we need is a full sun, but also a flattish area, which is quite rare. You know, in the woods that I come down to, the majority of it, the ground is undulating. But uh, here it's just uh, reasonably flat. And so what we're going to need, we're just going to make a set up here. I've just got one main stick, which is around about three foot in length. And then we've got a few marker sticks. Or well, if you're not going to use sticks, you could just use cones and that kind of thing. Just anything really, just to mark just where the edge of the shadow is going to be. So what we're going to do is just stick this uh, stick into the ground here. And obviously the sun's going to be hitting one side and creating a shadow on the opposite side. So on that shadow, we're just going to place a marker. And then every 15 minutes, where that shadow's moved to, we're just going to place another marker another marker and another marker and then at the end of the time period hopefully that them sticks will run in an east-west line so very very simple it just does take a bit more time than what uh, the watch method does but if you're sitting around with nothing else to do if you are turned around or you've lost everything else then this method you know certainly going to get you out of a pickle so as you can see now i've just placed the main stick into the ground here now this one's around about three foot tall and as you can see there just creating a nice uh, nice clean shadow for us it's just a case of just walking to the end and just actually popping one of these markers in and then every 15 minutes we'll just repeat the process and the longer that you leave it and the more markers that you have in the more uh, accurate this reading actually becomes
So as you can see now, we've got four markers in the ground. And we've left that for 45 minutes. So that's an ample amount of time and an ample amount of markers. And if you always remember that the first marker that you placed into the ground is your west marker, an easy way to remember that is west is best. But then if we've done everything right, this should be west, east, south, and north. So just grabbing a stick here, and here just a straight stick, similar kind of length to what we started off with, which was a three foot stick, and just run that just along the markers. And just grabbing a compass, just to verify that what we've done is correct here. And if I just run that along the stick, if the camera will pick that up there, that you can see that that's running here quite true. Just the variation difference there is the fact that the compass is running off a magnetic north and not a true north. And you know, this method has been used for centuries and it's saved countless lives. Certainly if you've lost your navigation kit or you've lost your watch, you're feeling a little bit turned around. That if you've got a little bit of time and you've got a little bit of clear sun, that this method can certainly work in pointing you in the right direction. And that's certainly true if you certainly know where it is that you've come from. You know, it's all very well and good knowing which way you're facing, but if you don't know where you've come from in the first place, you know, that's a different subject altogether. So if it is that uh, you rely heavily on your GPS or on your compass for general navigation, you know, I'm a firm believer, you know, that learning about solar navigation is critical. You know, knowledge is key, so they say. So if anything was trapped to these, the batteries may die or you may just lose them or break them. You know, having another way of uh, being able to navigate or find your way back out of the woods, you know, is as important as being able to learn how to light fire. You know, so if anything happens to these, you can always go over to your watch. If anything happens to your watch, you can always go over to uh, using just the shadow stick method. Now, again, you know, this method isn't 100%. The sun may not even be out. It may be night time. And then you're going to learn about other different ways and figure out different ways of navigating, whether it's through stars or by weather patterns and that kind of thing. You know, like I say, you know, this is just going to give you a rough direction. It's not going to say that's 42 degrees or that's 64 degrees or whatever it may be. But again, you know, learning all about this, like I say, is just going to stop you walking around in circles, but also just going to give you a sense of direction of where you're facing and where you're heading. So like always, guys, it just leaves me to say thanks a lot for stopping by and watching the videos, like always. And until next time, you take care, and I'll see you again.